Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on graphing linear functions in slope-intercept form. Our objectives today are that you will find the slope of a line, you will use the slope-intercept form of a linear equation to identify the slope and the y-intercept, and you will use slope-intercept form of a linear equation to graph a line. The question I would like you thinking about today and able to answer at the end of the video lesson is how can you use slope-intercept form to describe a graph of a linear function? So that's your goal today, is how can I use what I'm learning to describe the graph? Let's understand slope. The slope m, we use the variable m to represent slope, of a non-vertical line passing through two points. So we have two ordered pairs here, and they each have different subscript. So this ordered pair has subscripts 1, meaning point 1, and it can be any point on the line, but it's one point on the line, and a second point on the line. So we're just using these subscripts to name point 1 and point 2. So again, the slope m of a non-vertical line that passes through two points is the ratio of the rise, or the change in y, to the run, or the change in x. Let's look at what that looks like in a formula. So we have slope, which we refer to with the variable m, which is a ratio. And if you have a graphed line, you can do the rise over the run between any two points. You can also think of this, our rise is our change in y over our change in x, it's a ratio. And here's the formula if you know the two ordered pairs or any two ordered pairs on the line of the graph. You subtract the y-coordinates and divide by the change in the x-coordinates. So let's look at one. This is just generic. I don't have specific points yet. So here's a point on a graph, and we're calling this point one, x coordinate one, y coordinate one. Here's our second point. We're going to connect those with a line. So I have a line with two points. And to find the slope of this line, I'm going to rise and run from one point to the other. And the distance I rise is my numerator over the distance I run to my denominator. So you could find this distance out by subtracting the two y coordinates because it's how far I'm going from one point to the other on the y axis. Then my run is my distance between the two x coordinates of those points. When a line rises from left to right, as this one does, because we read a graph from left to right, just like we read a book, the slope is positive. When the line falls from left to right, the slope is negative. Let's look at some different types of slope and how you would describe slope. So again, when we say describe, you want to use words. So the direction a line rises or falls can be used to describe the slope. The slope of a line can be described in four ways. We can have a positive slope, the lines that rise from left to right have a positive slope. We can have a negative slope, where the line is falling from left to right. We can have a zero slope. A ho all horizontal lines have a slope of zero. There's no rise. All vertical lines have an undefined slope. The reason they have an undefined slope is because our change in x is always zero which means in that ratio you would be dividing by zero, and any time you divide by zero, you get undefined. So a zero slope means my numerator, or my rise, is zero. I'm not rising at all. There's no rise. We could run, but there's no rise. So if your rise is zero, you have zero divided by a value, and zero divided by anything is zero. So undefined is because we're going to have no run. Our run is zero giving us an undefined slope. This is also one of the reasons why a vertical line is not a function. So remember, it fails the vertical line test and is not a function, and it has an undefined slope. Now, we're going to practice using what we just learned to describe and find slope. 
So we've been asked to describe the slope of this line and then find the slope. So first, we're going to look at it, and it's falling from left to right, so I can say that the slope of this line is negative. That describes the line. And now we're going to do rise over run because it's graphed. So we can count. We're going to rise 2 because I'm rising to get to the next point, and then I'm going to run negative 5. If you go left, then it's negative. If you go down, it's negative. So I went up positive 2, left negative 5. So my rise over my run, so I have a negative slope. Negative 2 fifths is the slope of this line. Now we can also find this using our slope formula. We're going to take our x coordinate, negative 3, our y coordinate, sorry, negative 3, subtract our negative 1, our x coordinate 5, and subtract our second x coordinate 0. So negative 3, add the opposite, and then our denominator, 5 subtract 0 is 5. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 over 5. So it matches. So you could use your two ordered pairs in the formula, or if you have a graph, you can do rise over run. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video here, describe the slope of the line, and find the slope of the line. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So the description of this line would be that it's positive. It is rising from left to right. Now let's find the slope. So we're going to rise. Well, we'll lose the formula first. We are going to use our y coordinate 2 and subtract our second y coordinate, negative 3. And you could go the other way. You could have said negative 3 subtract 2. You'll get the same answer. And then our x coordinate, subtract our other x coordinate. So add the opposite, 2, add 3, add the opposite, 5 plus 1. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6, so our slope is 5 sixths. Now let's check it with rise. We're going to rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're going to run 6. So it checks. Rise over run, or our change in y over our change in x. We can also find slope from a table of values. So if you're given a table of values that represent the points on a line, we can find the slope because, again, we're looking for a ratio of the change in y over the change in x. So let's look at this table. 3 to 6 is an increase of 3. 6 to 9 plus 3 plus 3. y, 24 to 18 is subtract 6, subtract 6, subtract 6. So we can see our change in y and our change in x, and we can write the ratio for our slope our change in y over our change in x, and that simplifies to negative 2. So the slope of this line is negative 2. Your turn. Here's a table of values that represent a line. I would like you to pause the video here, find the slope, and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So our x is changing by an increase of 3. Add 3, add 3, add 3. y is increasing by 2. Add 2, add 2, add 2. So now our slope is our ratio of our change in y over our change in x. So our slope is 2 thirds. Now let's understand slope intercept form. A linear equation written in the form y equals mx plus b is in slope-intercept form. The slope of the line is represented by the m, and the y-intercept of the line is represented by b. So here's a bigger version of it, y equals mx plus b. There's a lot of information in a linear equation written in this form. So we start out understanding that slope represents the steepness or the rate of change. So we know from this, whether it's positive or negative, the direction of our line on the graph. Then we have our y-intercept here. And whatever sign comes before, if it's add a value, then we know our y-intercept is positive. If it's subtract a value, then we know that our y-intercept is negative. 
And this is important because it kind of anchors it to the graph. It, y intercept is where the line will cross the y axis. So this actually tells you one point on the line because whatever the y intercept is, we know that the x coordinate of that point is always going to be zero. The other thing we know from this form is any value for x that makes this equation true it has an output of y that describes a specific point. So any input x and then we find our output y tells us another point on the graph. And we know that x is our independent value variable and y is our dependent variable. y is dependent on the value of x. So we can use this, remember, as a function rule and put in values for x to solve for specific y values. Now let's use slope-intercept form to graph a line. So now I can identify that negative 4 is my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is negative 4, and I'm going to go to my graph and plot that point because it's a point on my line. I'm going to come back to my slope-intercept form and understand that negative 1 half is the slope of my line. So I can identify that my slope is negative 1 half, and now I can use this to graph my line. So I have negative 1 half. So I'm going to rise 1 and run negative 2. Because it's negative, one direction, rise or run, has to be negative. Rise 1, run 2. Or I could rise negative 1 and run positive 2. And now I can graph my line. So I did more than one point. You only need two points to graph a line. I was just trying to show you how rise and run would work. You could also input values for x to solve for specific outputs and graph those points. Now it's your turn. I would like you to identify the slope, the y-intercept, and graph the line. Please pause the video here and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So let's start with our y-intercept of negative 3. So we can identify that our y-intercept is negative 3 and plot that point on our graph. Second, we can identify that our slope is 2 thirds, and we can use that to graph more points. So we're going to rise 2 and run 3, rise 2 and run 3, or we could rise negative 2 and run negative 3. So if our slope is positive, we can go negative, negative, because negative 2 divided by negative 3 is positive 2 thirds. And there we have our line. We can also use the graph, after we've graphed it from slope-intercept form, to identify the x-intercept. The x-intercept is going to be the point that the line crosses the x-axis. So let's use our slope-intercept form to graph our line and identify the x-intercept. So first, we're going to identify that we have a y-intercept of 2 and plot that point. Our slope is 2, so I'm going to rise 2 and run 1 and graph my line. Rise 2, run 1. Then I can identify that my y-intercept is negative 1. I'm oh, sorry, my x-intercept is negative 1. My y-intercept is 2, my x-intercept is negative 1. We could also identify that if we didn't have graph paper by knowing that to find the x-intercept, the y-coordinate of the point must be 0. If we look at this, this ordered pair is negative 1, 0. So if I use my equation and plug in 0 for y and solve for x, I can also find the x-intercept, subtract 2 from both sides, divide both sides by 2, and I get the same thing, x equals negative 1. So if you can graph it, you can find it. And sometimes, remember, it won't pass through an integer value, so you might need to use this method to find out that it's 1 half or 4 fifths, so that just keep that in mind. Remember that the y-coordinate of the x-intercept will always be 0. Now it's your turn. I would like you to graph this line in slope-intercept form and identify the x-intercept. Pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So our y-intercept is negative 4. 
and our slope is 4. So I'm going to rise 4 and run 1, rise 4 and run 1, and graph my line. And to identify the x-intercept, we see that it crosses the x-axis at 1. Now we're going to apply what we've learned in previous lessons about function notation. So a linear function f models a relationship. We're going to graph the function f when f at 0 equals 2 and f at 6 equals 5. Then we're going to identify the slope, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept. So this becomes a matter of you understanding this function notation. What this means is it has the ordered pair 0, 2 on the line. Our input 0 gives us an output of 2. So this means that f is a function of x. So when x is 0, my output or y coordinate is 2. So we're going to graph our ordered pair 0, 2. And then we have our second function notation here. That's our y-intercept of 2. And then function when an input of 6 has an output of 5 tells us that we have the ordered pair 6, 5 on our line. So let's graph that. 6, 5. We can connect that with our line and then we can identify our slope because we can do 1, 2, 3, so a rise of 3, all over 6. And 3 over 6 simplifies to 1 half. Watch this. Rise 1, run 2. Rise 1, run 2. Rise 1, run 2. So remember that ratio should always be in simplest form. Now we have one more step. They want us to identify the x-intercept, so we look at the line and where it crosses the x-axis, and that is negative 4. So now I've identified, and remember these are all ways to describe our line. Slope, y-intercept, and x-intercept. Now it's your turn. We have a function h. And it's modeled here with these two function notation values. I want you to graph it, identify the slope, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept. Please pause the video now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So our first thing, we're going to interpret this to be h0. So it tells us that when x is 0, we have an output y of 5. So let's graph that. 0, 5, that tells me that my y-intercept is 5. Then we have h at 6 equals negative 5, meaning our, when our x is 6, our output is negative 5. 6, negative 5 is another point. We can graph our line. And from here, we can identify our slope. We're going to rise 5 and run 3. Rise 5 and run negative 3. So our slope is negative, we can see that. Our line is sloping down, falls left to right. And now we can identify our x-intercept because this line crosses the x-axis at 3 and we have an x-intercept of 3. And there you have it. That's how we graph linear functions in slope-intercept form. I hope you enjoyed this today and that you will come back soon to join us at The Magic of Math where we master math one video at a time. Have a great day.